The only thing on the agenda, at least from my end, that I wanted to talk about, just because I thought it was super interesting, that and it, it made sense, but like there was no info or evidence to support this theory. It wasn't even a theory, but just like you would, it, it's common sense. So like, Playboy Cardi came up with Ian Connor, right? Or Ian Connor helped him by putting him on because Ian Connor was already kind of like a streetwear legend. Maybe not legend at that point, but he was like up, up. And he was, he helped out like what, Yachty and other people. I'm not too like informed on what Ian Connor has done, but I know that Ian Connor is part of the story of Playboy Cardi. But I found out yesterday and I posted this on Twitter and Instagram was that he got 5% in Playboy Cardi's career. Check this shit out. 5% ownership. So somebody was like trying to hate on him. And and by the way, all the allegations and shit, we're not here to talk about that. Um, I'm not saying that he didn't or did do them, but like, come on. I don't even want to think about that shit. That's just ab abusive to even talk about. It. But anyway, somebody commented like hating on him saying throwback to when they were friends lol cardi blew that dude away now because we haven't heard from ian connor but if you recall ian connor been chilling with uzi he's been like helping with the creative direction of pink tape at least for one period of time i know that for a fact you know they had that like little fight video or like they posted up together apparently ian connor was helping like be a creative director almost like what virgil was doing for uh cardi for a whole lot of red but ian connor probably did that for the beginning of cardi's career and again since he helped his career at the very beginning like you know level up evolve from just being an underground rapper now he got a huge look it's like a finder's fee essentially ian connor five percent he's like yo i can put you on if you give me five percent of your career well now bro probably makes so much money just sitting back now a lot of people I'm like oh damn this like f is this in perpetuity meaning is this forever i don't know i think that maybe ian connor since he was associated with like aug asap crew clan group whatever you want to call it um it's like a finder's fee so maybe he only has the finder's fee of five percent until cardi's contract with asap aug is over which we don't know how many albums that is we'll just have to wait because eventually i think cardi might be on his own label opium right why else why would he not distribute through his own label and not have to give other people a percentage of his mola young mola baby you saying ian's capping I don't think Ian's cap. I think that early on in people's careers, like it's kind of like the Rice Gum and Aiden situation. Um, I don't think Rice Gum got a percentage of Aiden, but when he flew Aiden out to LA, he wanted a percentage for like management. And I believe Ian Connor did in fact manage Cardi at one point or another in some capacity, maybe not like manage in the business aspect, but like the way he moved, the way he dressed, like although Cardi was always on his fashion shit, but but again, Ian Connor was already like a public figure. You saying he's deaf playing? Bro, this is believable. Like, I don't think that this is unbelievable whatsoever. Like Trippy Red got a percentage of 6'9. He he might have even had a buzz before then. 6'9, that is. And then Trippy brought him to 10K Projects, which was which is currently Trippy Red's label, and he got 30 mil allegedly. And then now he gets a percentage off it. Or he did for the first contract. Cause when the contract's over, I mean it's hard to just like sign a paper. Well, the thing is with with contracts, I believe there had to be enforceable for a clause to be enforceable. It has to have a duration, whether it be time or like until a specific task or action is complete. So, and it doesn't make, it, it is not enforceable for like Cardi to die to end the contract. There are no fuck, I mean, there are death clauses where he talked about that, but he's not the fucking Grim Reaper, okay? Who is Ian Connor? He basically is like a streetwear mogul legend he had um ian connor's revenge he like came out with shoes he was just very influential with like streetwear i'm not into fashion but i know who he is mostly because of cardi from back in the day but he's he has his own brand outside of that 
you're saying probably 75k per year well think about it so let's check out fucking playboy cardi's net worth actually yeah let's just let's just do that playboy cardi net worth because asap og they probably got a 360 deal on cardi most major labels got a 360 deal on on their artists unless it's a you know a pub or a, a distro deal but usually that only encompasses streaming or like only the music aspect whereas 360 deal labels if it, to justify giving out so much money in an advance you got to give them a 360 deal so that they have more revenue sources to recoup their money you know what i mean so um playboy Cardi's net worth is this is february 2022 now net worths are usually lower than what they are because you don't know what type of income sources cardi got on the back end that's not known because a lot of these rappers own like you know what <laughs> shit cardi might have bought fucking you know tesla like five years ago because he'd been popping for a bit and then you know he went up to a kajillion dollars and then that he tripled his money or however much it is so nine million dollars let's just say from that number what is five percent of nine million it's probably a good amount i'm not gonna lie to you but just the straight cash flow ian connor don't gotta work a a day in his life anymore just because of that's that's what i'm trying to get that's what i'm trying to buy like property trying to buy things that are just like money that starts coming in while you asleep people just get sent you the rent check and then uh but but honestly i was thinking about it when you buy a house it's actually riskier because you put up so much money and for like one property you'll make like 200 bucks a month it's slow but like it's consistent but like if i just drop music or drop videos or i have my label once it gets popping it'll make way more than 200 dollars a month so why the fuck do people get so into real estate it's because you can leverage more money in a mortgage but regardless 9 million times 0 0.05 so Ian Connor, and it's probably more than this, Off Cardi has made, let me go back to the full view, at least, I'd say, at least 500K. Goddamn. Plus, I think that both of them benefited from each other, like their brands, because now it's kind of like the uh, the Drake effect with Lil Baby and all the artists he co-signs. It like keeps him with the youth. So Ian Connor had that status, but now now that Cardi has surpassed him in fame, at least in my eyes, because I'm more of a music guy. Now Ian Connor like looks good. Like he put on a fucking prodigy that became a legend, right? But yeah, either way. Half a mil in say since 2016, no, no, no. Yeah, 2017 maybe is when Cardi signed. Or 2015, 2016, whenever it is. 500K again, when you don't have to do shit other than just co sign someone, that's a bag. It's not like you gotta draw anything. You don't have to. Once you get a brand, it gets way easier. Even for like my youtube stuff i had to grind so hard at the beginning but then like it once you get momentum it's so much easier it's so much less stressful Ugh. it's 90k a year for five years bro that's crazy 90k again just not doing anything you can just 90k you can live off fucking 30k 40k depending on where you live I know people that do that 90k though you can live really comfortably especially if you're not doing anything although the way i see it sometimes when you don't have a job and you're home all day you tend to spend more money because you're bored so you're like looking online you see cool shit on instagram or youtube and you're like i want to i want to buy that i want to buy that but while you're at work you can't really spend money other than like on lunch my first year out of college, I lived off of like 36K a year and I was paying $1,300 in rent. I lived kind of in the hood of Miami. I'm not going to lie. And it wasn't the greatest, but 
I got the job done and I still invested some in my YouTube channel. That's when I was my first job. That's when I started my YouTube because I was like, fuck this shit. 